want to talk a little bit about the wake of the Activision Blizzard deal with Microsoft. Now, say what you will about Activision Blizzard, Lord knows I have, and will right now. It's a shadow of its former self that once had a variety of great games but was whittled down by a misogynistic potato to become the epitome of a company afraid to take chances and sacrifices its people in order to turn out the same game over and over and over again. And I, for one, can't wait to get rid of Bobby Kodak. Let's see that Bobby Kodak countdown right now. Oh, I I'm supposed to have a little countdown. Uh, so you know what? Sometimes you, you can't always get what you want. That's okay. Last I checked, we had 69 days, which was a nice number to have there. There goes that gag. Meanwhile, despite all this, despite the recent faults, both it and my own, Activision Blizzard does have a history of making some of the most influential games in the industry. Both Activision and Blizzard have a library of IP now lost in dust-covered tomes, unseen by human eyes, outside of physical game collectors and ROM enthusiasts. Now that they roll into Microsoft, Phil Spencer has stated that the company is not above letting their developers revive old IPs if there is passion behind it. With that in mind, here are the top five unlikely Activision Blizzard IPs I'd like to see return to Xbox. Number five. Doom was a very 90s game. It's not the game on the... Be, hold on, it's not the game I'm talking about, but Doom is a very 90s game. Metal soundtrack, blood, guts, and violence is a selling point, a shitty action movies featuring The Rock. It never went away, but the series didn't really get the love of the original until its return in 2016. This game went from being flat sprites to 4K 3D so seamlessly that it took everyone off guard while maintaining the spirit of the franchise. And I want to see the new regime bring that same love to Hexen. Now, Hexen is a first-person shooter by Raven Software that runs on the same original Doom engine, except it's a fantasy setting. Replace guns and demons with sorcery and demons. And you've got this IP that is laid dormant in Activision's mossy, untouched pool of franchises. Now, this is a layup because Phil Spencer has repeatedly name-dropped this game like a finance bro trying to get in the standard of L.A., the fruit is ripe and ready for the right dev to pick it up. All the fun of its fantasy setting, three selectable characters, and a hub world connecting all the levels with the gameplay of the latest Doom, and you basically have a first-person magic game that people will actually remember in a year. Number two, or four, counting backwards, five, four, here we go. The year is 1993. I was just nearly nine years old, standing in a blockbuster, and you know what? I'm not doing this. Anyone who talks to me for more than a second about video games will eventually hear me mention The Lost Vikings, so I'm not going to bury the lead. This game rocks, and is one of Blizzard's best pre-Warcraft IPs. It's funny, irreverent, creative. This, this series was one of the first to purposefully make me laugh through dialogue, and not just because I was stomping Goombas with the same sick perversion of a sick child plucking wings off a butterfly. In the game, you control three Vikings, Eric, Baliog, and Olaf, after they've been plucked from their native land onto a spaceship of the evil Tomator. Switching through each one at a time, you must use your unique skills to keep them safe and get all three to the end of the level in order to escape. The sequel involves time travel and adds a werewolf and a dragon to the mix, and it's just, it's wild fun Check it out, but don't do the Sega Saturn version. Uh, they updated everything to be pseudo Donkey Kong Country style graphics, and it does not work. Stick with the 16-bit versions. They have ported it to other platforms throughout the years. They've even added these three to Heroes of the Storm when Blizzard still thought that would be a thing. Uh, but we are long overdue for an update, and this game, as like a mid-tier 15 to 20-hour puzzle experience, could be an easy Game Pass win. Number three, Pitfall. Certainly the oldest one on this list and a way to remind yourself that Activision has been at this a long time, Pitfall is an Atari mainstay and certainly one of the most impactful games of the 1980s. A platform adventure game before we really had those classifications in gaming, you play as Pitfall Harry, an adventurer looking for lost treasure having to swing over snakes 
alligators and, you guessed it, pitfalls in order to survive. And this was a recipe for success. It is one of the best-selling Atari games of all time, got A-plus reviews when it was released, and even appeared in a cartoon, an honor only really given to characters like Mario, Hubert, and a cigarette-smoking midget pretending to be Mega Man. Now, Pitfall had subsequent games, most notably a 16-bit version called Pitfall the Mayan Adventure, but despite its graphical fidelity, it did not have the polish of platformer like Mario did and therefore did not maintain the good favor of the original. Now, in 2023, Xbox has a license and potentially a direct competitor to PlayStation's Uncharted. Let's bring Pitfall back as a AAA limelight. And you'll lean into the Indiana Jones parody, have a laugh at the adventure pulp genre, and create a single-player experience that has eluded Activision Blizzard ever since the idea of games as a service crawled up Bobby Kotick's ass. That schmuck. Number two. Developed by Blizzard and cover art by comic book legend Jim Lee, Blackthorn is an action-adventure game similar to Flashback or Prince of Persia with one distinct difference. A motherfucking shotgun. Now the story reads like a child playing refrigerator poetry with an issue of Heavy Metal Magazine. And I mean that in the best possible way. See, for every castle and magic stone in the game, there are proximity mines and laser walls. It's insane, it's wild, and it's just there for the taking. Uh, Blizzard is aware they have it, too, because it, they made it free on Battle.net in 2013. They released it as part of the Blizzard Arcade Collection. and even teased us with an April Fool's showing us a stills from a fake sequel. And while I still pray this is more of like a Pandaren April Fool's situation, I know that I'm not that lucky. However, now that this falls into Game Pass umbrella, that luck may actually change. See, in a perfect world... Blackthorn becomes the character Duke Nukem no longer can be and gets placed in a third-person action game in the same vein as Darksiders. Now, let me ride down long stretches of highway, shotgun in hand, firing off at flying demons while an ACDC cover band attempts an original soundtrack. I want to tackle a giant six-legged panther creature and crash him into a castle before using his body to soak up laser turret fire. Let me fight a giant shark on a surfboard, firing off shotgun shells, hair flowing in the wind, like this picture promised. And of course, number one. So, real talk. I made this list to focus on forgotten IPs. Franchises that Activision Blizzard were unlikely to return to. And while th th there are many I have not mentioned here, I think it's fair to say that at least one is least likely to be revisited is Warcraft. Now, not World of Warcraft, not Warcraft the Gathering, not whatever the fuck Warcraft Arclight Rumble is, seemingly the equivalent of a novelization of a movie based on a book. I want OG, top-down, they're destroying our city, RTS Warcraft. Let's go back to the roots and bring proper faction warfare to the series once again. Now, they did try with Warcraft 3 Reforged, but try is really stretching it. Uh, the game was just panned in the community, and quite frankly, I think they personally bombed it so they could just say that it didn't work and people would leave them alone. Maybe I'm paranoid, but I wouldn't put it past them. Nonetheless a return to form could be fantastic. People still love these originals, and the RTS market is not as oversaturated as it once was. Furthermore, as loved as World of Warcraft is, there are a lot of people who just aren't interested or willing to play a game with a thousand other PC players focusing on maximizing builds and playing the same dungeon over and over again hoping you get that rare crystal cod piece or whatever. Introduce the common person to Azeroth through the lens of a single-player campaign is much an easier point of entry than just jumping into the MMO experience where the world has changed twice, other dimensions introduced, characters died, revived, polymorphed, and meanwhile you still have to kill eight murlocs before you can leave your small town. 
Look, the, the movie thing didn't really work. But Warcraft has all the room to continue and grow as a franchise, and that reach could go far beyond Discord servers and OnlyFans cosplayers. And if not, you know what? Sell the rights to Games Workshop. Warcraft was almost a Warhammer game back in the day. Let's go full circle, make Warcraft analog. Blizzard loves money, and there's nothing more overpriced than the miniature wargaming market anyway. And that is our top five. I'm going to get a quick refresh of water. And folks, when we come back in just a couple minutes, we will be joined by the co-owner of Holy Wow Games, one of the minds behind Trombone Champ, artist, graphic designer, woman amongst town, Jackie Paquito. Stick around. We got some good stuff coming for you. We'll be right back. 